Number 52. A solution contains 5.00 grams of urea, which is CONH22, a non-volatile compound, which is dissolved in 0.100 kilograms of water. If the vapor pressure of pure water at 25 degrees Celsius is 23.7 torr, what is the vapor pressure of the solution? And then we're assuming ideal solution behavior. Okay, so a lot to unpack here, right? They gave us that we're dealing with a solution, which means that we should have a solute and a solvent. So first let's identify which one is which. Now they did say that we had five grams of urea, which was dissolved into the water. Now, generally speaking, you will have a lower amount of your solute, which is always being dunked into your solvent. The solvent is generally the liquid substance that you're placing your uh, solid in. Now we have five grams of urea and that's being placed into the water. Water is the liquid component. We're dropping the urea in it. So we know that the five grams of the urea has to be the solute. And that liquid, um, you know, the liquid substance in which houses the solute is the solvent. And the combination of the solute and the solvent is the one happy solution. So there's your three S words, solute, solvent, and solution. Okay, so they gave us grams of the solute. We have a kilogram value of a solvent. And now they're talking about vapor pressure. So we have a vapor pressure of the water. So that's the pressure of the solvent, right? That's the pressure of the H2O. We just said that the water was the solvent. So we have a pressure of a solvent at 23.7 uh, torrs. And now we just want the vapor pressure of the total solution. So P, capital P for pressure. And we're looking for the pressure of the solution. Okay, well, there's got to be some type of formula, right? There's two hints here. They gave us the pressure of the solvent. They're looking for a pressure of a solution. And they told us that we're dealing with a non-volatile compound. This sounds like Ryolt's law, which is this formula right here. Ryolt's law is just boiled down into three components. If you want to find out that pressure of the solution, which, hey, we do want to find the pressure of the solution, this would be equal to the pressure of the solvent. And we already said that the solvent pressure, the water, was 23.7 torr. So we know this number. This is 23.7 torr. So it's that pressure of the solvent times by X of the solvent. Now, what is X, right? X is generally the variable that we're solving for. But in chemistry, if you have an X, that means that you're dealing with a mole fraction. And specifically, we want the mole fraction of the solvent, which is the H2O. Well, they didn't give us that though, right? They just talked about grams and kilograms. But if I want to find out that pressure of the solution, I need to find out that mole fraction. And that's why I wrote the formula down here. If we're solving for an X value, which is what we want, which is the mole fraction, we take the moles of that compound, whichever one you're trying to look for, and divide it by the total moles. A mole fraction, a fraction in general, is just a part divided by a whole. The part here would be the moles of the solvent, which is the H2O, divided by the total moles. So let's bring this up, shall we? Now we said that we had 5.00 grams of the urea, which is CONH2. But we don't want that. We want to find out the moles. We want to find out the moles because we need this mole fraction. So NH2, I forgot to put the two over here, two, two, right? Two, two. Well, grams of one substance to moles of one substance, that's just dividing by the molar mass, right? So I have to go on the periodic table and find out what the molar mass is of CONH22. So I got one carbon, so that's 12.01 on the periodic table. I got one um, oxygen, so that's just a 16 right on the dot. We have 
two nitrogens. So I'm going to times two by the 14.01, which is on my uh, periodic table of what nitrogen is, 14.01. And then we have four hydrogens. So I'm going to add that to the four times 1.008. And that will be my total molar mass. So let's see, 12.01 plus 16, oop, not 26, 16, plus 2 times 14.01 plus 4 times 1.008. I'm just going to take a step back and look at it just to make sure I got all the right numbers in there. 16, 2 times 14, okay. And that looks good to me. Let's press enter. Okay, so my molar mass is 60.062. So I'm just going to divide by 60.062. So 5 divided by this, and I get roughly 0 0.0832. Sure. Okay, now that is the moles of one of the compounds, right? So let's keep going. They did give us that we need uh, 0.100 kilograms of the water, which is H2O. But in order to get to moles, I need to find the grams. So first what I'll do is I'll just quickly convert from grams, from kilograms to grams, right? This is just times by 1,000. Similarly, you could take the decimal, move it to the left three times, and you get a, 100 grams of H2O. Now from that, let's find out the moles. So we got 100 grams of H2O. Let's go to moles of H2O. We just got to divide by the molar mass. On the periodic table, we got two hydrogens, so 1.008, and then plus the 116. So two times 1.008 plus 16. We get 18.016. So I'll take the 100 divided by 18.016 and I get roughly 5.55 moles of the H2O. Okay, now keep in mind we want to find out the mole fraction of the solvent. So the solvent has to go on the top of my mole fraction formula. So when I'm doing this the moles of that solvent is on the top and the total is on the bottom. And the solvent we just said was the 5.55 moles. The total moles is now if we added up these two values. So I, I guess maybe, you know, if we take these two values and add them together, I guess I'll just do it on the bottom, right? We take 5. 0.55 plus the other mole value, 0 0.0832. And I get a mole fraction of the H2O, because that's the one that I'm specifically looking for. We'll take this value and plus it by this value. So I get roughly 5... 0.55 divided by 5.63. I'm not going to write down all the numbers um, just because I don't want the video to be, you know, so long with the numbers. But when I do my math, I'm not going to round. So that mole fraction is going to be 5.55. So this number divided by that number. And I get 0 0.985. Mole fractions do not have any um, units to them. It's just a fraction. And now we know what the mole fraction of that solvent is. 0 0.985. So finally we can say the pressure of the solution equals the pressure of the solvent, which is the 23.7, and I'm just going to multiply that by the mole fraction that I found, 0 0.89, uh, sorry, 0 0.985. And then we can find the pressure of the solution, which would be equal to, let's see, 
23.7 times that number. And there we go. Uh, let's do how many sig figs? I guess three. 23.3 units. Since this pressure was in tor, this pressure also has to be in tor. So like pressure units go together. And that's it. What's the vapor pressure of the solution? 23.3 tor. And that is it. Let's box it off. And we are done with this problem. What'd you think? Thank you for coming here and checking out the, the videos for you guys. I really hope this is helping you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys and I try to get to as many as I can. Um, so thanks for being part of the community and I hope you're doing great. All right. Keep studying hard and I will talk to you in the next lesson. Okay. Bye-bye.